and of course this is mandatory uh, just spread yourself across the bank as far or as wide as possible welcome back then guys bit of a different episode this week um, I'm going to be sort of talking you through a few sessions I had up to the river where I went fishing for sort of three or four sessions to try well try and really sort of understand how the river fishes because I've not done a whole lot of it and nearly everyone's told me it's a hard river to fish so I thought let's uh, grab the bags get up there and see if we can't you know put a fish on the bank so it started off with me going up to the Arran which is a river I've done a little bit on uh, before I did some uh, a video up there of me trotting a stick float for um, uh, well I thought they were dace but they turned out to be bleak and also I did a uh, an, an episode of me out on the rother before just um, when I first got my uh, centre pin but I got up to the Aran and it was absolutely impossible to fish in my opinion uh, where I'd fished before uh, was totally overgrown uh, I couldn't even stand on the sort of reed bed that I was stood on before because the water was up over nearly up over my boots um, even though it was supposed to be low tide shot around the corner to um, the other stretch where I'd done um, uh, the other video uh, stop and bridge and uh, did try a little bit of trotting but because the water was so coloured there was just no real uh, no real chance of anything seeing anything so I thought Do you know what let's get on get on the feeder I had a bit of ground bait uh, that I'd mixed up so in with that ground bait mix loaded the feeder up started plugging away at a little sort of corner under a tree and lo and behold I was really pleased with what we pulled out so check this one out so welcome back then guys um, could be on to a bit of a non-starter went up to the road um, went up the road here to a river tidal stretch been there before um, absolutely unfishable unless you were had waders I was probably 12 foot from the bank um, and up to top of the wellies uh, nowhere near the river to get any fishing actually done so I've come up the up the river here to um, the rother stretch I haven't been to for a couple, good few years um, again never really had anything out of it so hopes are not high but <laughs> we're here um, got the float rod got the feeder rod uh, I've just knocked up some ground bait here yeah, nice nice sort of particle mix I've got the um, I've got some cooked cereal meal in there you know the horse feed as made famous by uh, Graham TA fishing uh, two two tubs of that uh, a tub of bran uh, a tub of the frenzied hemp seed and a tub of pellets what are they like um sort of four mil pellets i think three or four mil i'm gonna let that um sort of settle off absorb a bit of the water and then i'm gonna get um the float rod set up and i'm gonna um try trot in some maggots and stuff down it's a nice bit of pace i can't, I can't see I, I don't know why there wouldn't be any fish about but there was a fella up here that said he hadn't had a sniff he was rolling some meat so who knows it's one of those it's rivers i've never done it a whole lot i thought come and give it a go let's get on it right got the um rod somewhat and I'm using a uh, Drennan uh, stick float there um, on the Drennan stick float rod have you with a number 16 I think it is silver fish hook um, this says it takes six number four now the conversion tells me that's the same uh, uh, one number four is or six number four is the same as two BB three BB something like that is that BBs yeah, BB, so I'm just going to put 3BB on there just to bulk that float down. 1BB is the same as two number fours, apparently. So that shall be my. I'm going to bulk it. Actually, no, I won't. I will shirt button them. I don't know how deep it is, so I'm just going to. 
I'm just guessing at the moment. It's all a guess. What do we say on the channel? It's all an experiment. So that's I'll put one just below the float as well because I think I'm going to need to make it a bit deeper. There we go. So that's three BB. Got me hook on the end there. Let's slide that up a little bit. Um, using an interesting reel today. Not used it before. It's uh, an old Drennan. Um, no, it's not. It's Daiwa. It's uh, a it's a closed face reel so you press the button and it allows the line to come out and then when you when you wind it re-engages the the drag i've already got snagged up on all the uh, thistles there so that's good and got tangled so and got tangled here as well so yeah we're we're on to a good start so i'm gonna i'm just gonna i'm gonna have one trot there's a fella who was fishing just up the way. He said he had a real problem with snags. So um, I'm just gonna do one one trot and um, see if I'm clipping the bottom or what. I might need, never used it. I feel like I need to bail arm it. Press the button. I'm just gonna have to sort of drop and swing, I think. Barely see the float. might have been tripping the bottom. <laughs> Here we go then. First proper fish, shall we say out of the river. He's a nice fish. Look, look at this bream. Come on, man. Stay still. Get that hook out. I might just weigh this one just because he's a he's a nice size, so let's get him in the way sling. just as all the uh, thunder kicks off. I don't think I will weigh him. I do want to weigh him though, he's a cracker. So I weighed that in uh, eight ounces. So I'm saying that's four pound. That's a four pound bream, very nice. I'm gonna put him back. So there we go then guys, let's just have a quick look. What a lovely fish to have. Wild river bream. Absolute cracker. Haven't had a bream for that size for quite some time. Didn't get him on the float, got him on the feeder in the end, but what a beauty. Right, let's get him back. Watch me go in now. Let's just let him recover. Oh, that's it. Let him get a bit of a Air in his lungs, uh, water through his gills almost, as you say. But look at that fish. Oh, well pleased with that. So after the um, delight and the success of that bream, I thought to myself, I've got to go back. So at the nearest and soonest opportunity, which happened to be the next day, I went back again. Uh, went back to the same place, went to the same swim. However, the water had dropped by half a metre. You know, that was uh, a bit of a shock. I didn't realise it could happen in 24 hours, but it did. Uh, and the part that I pretty much caught that bream was, well, I could almost stand on it. So I thought, oh, well, there's not going to be uh, many fish under there. But I could see where the main flow of the river was. So I thought, you know what, let's just cast the feeder down in the, into it. And um, well, I had a few early uh, sort of indications and scaled it down. Ended up fishing the maggot feeder uh, with, with, the, with the half pint of maggots that I had left over. So I thought, you know what, this looks like we're onto something here. And sure enough, I was into a few little fish. So watch this one and uh, see what you think of them. So here we are then guys, out on the river, 
session two. Um, I have I've been fishing them only first chuck, um, and I've just had a small dace, so that's nice to uh, nice to see. Um, I've mixed up a load of ground bait as you can see because I'm going to go on the feeder. But while that's um, softening up, I've just been using I've just been on the maggot feeder. Four white on the uh, on the hook, size 14, something like that. Um, yeah, and literally first chuck, just had a small dace. So, um, and yeah, I know I did a session where I was on the river, and uh, oh come here, bugger! I thought I was having loads of dace, but they were bleak. But this one definitely was a dace. Right. Here we go. Then second chuck. Let's get. Oh, the thing about maggot feeders is they just it chucks all the maggots like everywhere just immediately let that settle oh, mm. oh that is a fish on now there we go nice days that is a nice day so, did have another little something just to finish out on. A little stripy number. Really nice little perch there. Perch on the uh, on the feeder. White maggots. Can't say better than that, can you? We do a big old spine on him. Yeah. Nice. Right, let's get him back. Right, I think I'm gonna uh, have that one to end out on. Had a, a whole handful of these little guys. Days like this, sort of all day. Um, well, a few hours, you know. It's not a, not a day session or anything. So I'm going to get this one back and then get my gear packed up. Two trips, two successes in my opinion. So um, I thought this is going well. Let's go. I've got to go for a third. Went down for a third trip. This was a morning trip. Um, everything looked really good uh, you know weather was good it was a nice sort of crisp autumn morning um, baited up a few swims and about three swims I baited up on the um, on the approach when I first got there uh, and then I went back to the car picked all the gear up got it um, got it set up and I started fishing nothing hour or uh, hour and a half in the first swim not a peep it was the first swim that you come to it's the first swim curse. You do, you just don't fish the first swim. Moved on to the next swim. Again, nothing. What's going on? Not not what I wanted. I, I was thinking, you know, I've nailed the rivers. No. Moved on to the third swim. Lovely swim. I thought this is going to be something right down tucked in this corner. Turns out, nothing tucked in this corner. And then I saw a cut, bit of movement, not on the rod, but in the water big flashes of silver and there were some big rolls of fish in the in the swims and I realised these were pike and they looked like pretty big pike as well uh, so that might be why there was no fish in that um, that stretch did see a big cormorant as well that might uh, explain why there's uh, no fish in the swim either but you know we live and learn. Not being downhearted, I thought I have to get out again. Uh, with the river remaining at quite a low level, I thought there's not much. There mustn't be much oxygen in this water, so I thought I'll come up to the top end where there's a weir pool that comes off of the Coulter Shore um, beam pump station, uh, and I thought there might be a bit more sort of going for it up there. Shot up there. Uh, this was a morning session again, and. Um, Again, I hadn't had much success on the third trip in the morning, but it was the only time I had to go. So, shot up there. Uh, again, probably half seven. Uh, sorry, it was probably about nine o'clock by the time I got there. Had until about one lunchtime. Baited up nicely, got the gear set up. And I thought, I'm going to try this little side pool just off of the main weir, you know, just where the, there might be a bit of less flow. And I did have an, uh, a nice take. But it turned out to be a nice perch, well, a small perch, but a little perch that had taken nearly a whole lobworm. So not really the fish I was expecting, but it was good, nice to see, save the blank. So then on to the fifth and final session. 
this was an evening session that I managed to get in just after I'd been there for the first time up at the up at the weir. I thought I'm going to go evening, fish slightly into dark because um, that's when things might start to happen. Well, it started off slow, and then I did have what I thought was a nice take. Struck into it, and I thought, oh, this is hit me in a stick or something. And it suddenly came off and it started fighting and I thought ah oh, epic right I'm into something now but I was not expecting the fish that came out in the net check this out right then guys this is a turn up for the book was not expecting a pike I've never caught a pike before single little hook right in the scissors don't have any of my predator gear <laughs> I don't really do much predator fishing but I do have a little bit of pike gear but I don't know how the fuck to handle this thing well that is an absolute turn up seven and a half pound pike on seven and a half zeroed it with the scales so let's make sure this boy gets back nice and quick nice and safe because ah uh, I don't really know what to do with him other than just let him go. Get his, let him recover. He's an absolute beast though, look at him. I'm almost in over my boots here. When he's ready to go, he's gonna go. As long as he doesn't fucking turn around and slap me. I think he'll be all right. There we go, and he's gone. What an absolute belter. Just holding in the weeds there. Quality. Oh. <laughs> Was not expecting that. <laughs> Blimey. So as for the rivers, that's certainly not gonna be my last trip up the river. Um, I'm going to wait for some rain because the river is very low and everyone says it needs to have a bit more water on it to really um, come alive and I can understand that. I remember last year when it was in flood I went up there and I did I did hook into a, um, a I think it was a sea trout obviously not supposed to be fishing for them I wasn't fishing for it it just came and it took I think I was only fishing maggots but you know it took maggots from me uh, when I was ledgering with a bit of uh, liquidized bread and you know nice fish but the river was in flood and that bream I had the river it wasn't in flood at all but it was still up uh, a bit more than where it is now so I'm gonna have to give it a rest I think go back to the uh, go back to the lakes and um, wait until wait until winter maybe maybe that's when it switches on but anyway, thank you very much for watching this episode. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the clips that I got from being on the bank side. I will be doing some woodland stuff at some point. I know, shock horror. Nearly all the uh, videos I've been doing recently are fishing, but that's because I just got really into it. I did those, uh, I did what I was out on the bream, I did the method feeder session, and now, of course, I've been out on the river. Got to get to the woods. The weather is starting to change. I know October's been mad warm so far. But we will get an autumn and we will get out of the woods and we will make some food and we'll do some crafty stuff. So thanks very much for watching guys. Catch you on the next one. Bye.